What? How long, how, how long have I had an allotment? Look, I don't know who has informed you and said that I've got an allotment, but I don't have an allotment. How many times have I got to tell you? I've got a garden. What? You say it's semantics. It's just all the same thing. It's garden allotment. But there's a difference. A big difference. Allotment, you're paying to plant things. Whereas with a garden, usually it's your own and you don't pay anyone. So, yeah. I've never ever had to wait for an allotment. Look, what I'm trying to say is that I don't belong to any secret allotment association. I've never belonged to a secret organisation like that. I've ne never distributed seats to anyone. I mean, say, that's just being revolutionary and, uh, you know, rather radical. But you say that I've sort of there's photographic evidence of me giving advice how to grow potatoes. Well, yeah, that I must admit that the biggest success that I've had in my growing career has been growing potatoes in that sort of revolutionary, radical way of planting the potatoes into the ground. I know that it's not what you say the accepted way of, of growing potatoes, but I know I should be growing them in tubs like everybody else, but I'm just, I don't have the money for it, that's the truth of the matter, I don't have the money to buy any tubs to put those potatoes, so I just shove them into the ground. This, this, what? Yeah! That, uh, the biggest failure that I've had, you know, it's when your vegetables, they just get, they get attacked by bugs and insects and they, they just eat all the leaves and everything's destroyed and I thought that, you know, I'd be an entrepreneur and, and uh, sell them as distressed vegetables, that uh, I thought there'd be a big market for it. I even made a video about distressed vegetables and and I thought that you know it'd be great for all those people on the on the Atkinson's diet or the high fluorocarbon whatever it is diet uh, that uh, if they ate distressed vegetables because there's absolutely no nutrition in them at all there's hardly anything for you to eat there so yeah that I must admit that that was one thing that I tried to do, is uh, market distressed vegetables, but it, it never caught on. But, uh, I even made a video about it. Where did I learn gardening? Oh, where does every other prisoner learn gardening? In the gulag, of course. I used to go up at midnight, midnight, and work for 24 hours. Nothing to eat except earthworms. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you got some soup. And when you did to get the soup, you held out your plate and you had to say to them, Stir it up! Stir it up! Because they would take the ladle and they'd just skim the stuff off the top. And if you had the stuff off the top, you just didn't get anything. Nothing at all. Whereas if you stirred it up, then you got all the eyes and the bones and the fins and everything. All that good stuff. So and that was the only way that you could survive out there in the Kulag. And the other tip that I'll give you is that when it comes to tobacco, you don't say, stir it up, you say, press it down. Because uh, what happens is they, they fluff it up, they fluff it up so that it looks like it's a lot. But it's not a lot. So when you get your tobacco in this little box, They'll try and sort of sprinkle it in there and make you think that you're getting a lot of tobacco, but you're not! 
you're not getting any tobacco at all. So tell them to press it down and get your thumb and press it down. And then you'll get your tobacco in the right amount. What? A winter garden. Are you off your head? I won't bail your head. It's impossible to have a winter garden here. You know why? Because it's minus 40 degrees centigrade and two metres of snow. Where do you think you're going to be growing things in that, eh? It's the tundra. Tried and true, yep, yeah, I would say that uh, tried and true is uh, hanky and timo. It's a Finnish potato and also a rosamunda, which is a red Finnish potato. Those are the ones that I, I always try and grow. But, uh, there's nothing better, nothing better than uh, when it comes on about Johannes, you know, midsummer time. You can dig out your early potatoes, your hanky and timo. They're just as skinny, just smooth like the inside thigh of a virgin from Ethiopia. And uh, when you cook them, they don't take all that long to cook. And they just taste like uh, a lovely nutty flavour. And the Rosamunda, that's more of a sort of winter potato, and they're great for baking, you know, roasting in the oven, slicing them, opening them up, putting cheese in there, a little bit of tuna and mayo mixed up. That's what I really like. And uh, you're asking, would I like to do something different, grow something different? Yeah! Well, I would like to be able to grow tomatoes because I, I fail every year to grow the tomatoes. I always get them to come green, but they never become red because here there's a sort of, in Finland there's a short, short season and uh, that gives you problems that uh, they never ripen, they never become uh, red. And uh, I've tried lots of Russian ones, the silvery fern, beautiful foliage, a lovely tomato, but they never ever get red. I've tried indeterminate tomatoes and determinate. I think the determinate ones might be the way to go, because those uh, indeterminate ones just go long and lanky. And uh, whereas the Determinate ones are usually sort of bushy and nice, and uh, I've got to find a very, very short season uh, bush type determinate tomato and uh, see if I can grow it. That would be my dream come true. But I think I would need a greenhouse or something because I've always just been trying to grow them outside and it never ever works. And uh, that's about it. What's the other questions? Uh, I'll have to have a look and see. Hold on a second. How do I, I preserve my, my vegetables? Well, I don't. I eat them before anyone else can. I mean, see, that's the only way to do it. You would never ever survive out here if you didn't eat everything. Uh, because somebody, somebody would just come up and, and take it off you before you could eat it. So as soon as I get it out of the ground, it's straight into my mouth. And uh, no questions asked. But, uh, a full belly is a, makes it for a happy man. That's what I've always said. And... Uh, Well, what type of food do I like? Well, I'll tell you what type of food I like. I like to make karel and paiste. You know what karel is from, from Finland or the east of Finland? It used to be the garden, the garden of Finland. The uh, most wonderful place. But the, 
The Russians, well, you know what the Russians did. They took two bits of Finland and kept it for themselves. And Karela was was one of them. That it, it had the be the best place to ever grow strawberries that you would ever imagine. It was just a wonderful place, Karela. And uh, then they also took another arm up. It used to, Finland used to be called the Maiden. It looked like a swarming nato, it was called a nato. Yeah. The maiden of Finland, she had two arms sort of sticking up in the air. And uh, But there was lots of mining resources, you know, way up there in the north. And the Russians said, we'll have that. So that's what happened. They took that arm. So now that the Finnish maiden, she's only got one arm. And uh, there's, in Finland, there's lots of people who want to get Karela back. That, uh, they say that it belongs to Finland, and, uh, and then there's other people who say, oh, that wouldn't be good at all. That, uh, can you imagine what happened when East Germany sort of wanted to get reintegrated with West Germany? The money they had to lay out for the infrastructure. It was just phenomenal. But, uh, just building all the roads and uh, just mending all the houses and things like that. They spent a fortune. And if Finland ever got uh, Karela back, then uh, that's what they would have to do. They would have to spend a fortune trying to, to build up the infrastructure again. And uh, it's just not going to happen. But anyway, they have this marvellous dish called Karel and Paiste, which is a mixture of beef and pork and lamb. Meat all just... Uh, fried up and then with, with carrots and suede and onion and bay leaves and Jamaican pepper. Jamaican pepper? How do we get Jamaican pepper out here on the tundra? Well, it would surprise you what goes on here and what we can get and what we can't get. But, uh, but uh, so it's Carol and Paiste. I dream of it. It's the next best thing to new potatoes. But, uh, so I think that's me now. What? You want to give you names? Just, you know, be an informer. I'll only give you two names. But, uh, and so you can't get your hands on them. I'm going to sort of give uh, kindred spirits just like me. But they're so far away that you won't be able to sort of incarcerate them or, or bring them out into the tundra along with me. But, uh, one of them is uh, a fellow called Dale Calder. He's, he's a bit of a hermit over in Canada. And then the lovely, the one and only, Elisa Yosef. She's a little French woman. He does lovely things with chilies. So those are my two people that uh, will have, the, have to answer to you. Alright, that's all from me now. Bye for now. And be a blessing to someone today.